Sivaram Prasad, visiting faculty at uh, IIA. Today, we will take one subject of design thinking, which is uh, very much talked about nowadays. As a design thinking, if you see, what is so different from regular design? Why design is required? Such type of questions will come. If you see, in the original olden days, design is built into a man and there is no specifically outside design agency like that in the beginning. That is when handcrafts were prominently being done. Later, in the industrial age, the design process, design, it has come into the picture. If you see the original uh, manufacturing methods, the man, he used to have his own design knowledge. He designs, he manufactures and he himself will prepare everything, a one-man show. But at that time, the quantity was limited and also the facilities were limited. It was serving only the need purpose, that means when there is a need, that alone is being done. And when you are starving with the needs, you are worried only about the function, nothing else. Later on, when a lot of products you wanted and you want a mass production, you had to come convert that individual into a scientific method. And from scientific method, design has taken the shape. While doing the design, there used to be a lot of <coughs> process methods and also the, of course, basically it has got the core subject backup and only design methods, process, they will only change. Otherwise, the basic core engineering subject or the design subject is same. When it has come into the mass production, because of the high volumes and competitions, you have to add more than the function, some more feature or something more consumer focus. It is not just a need. Eh? You have to focus the customer and attract the customer and try to give something more than just function. So that was the time design has gone, uh, taken shape and also the customer orientation has come. What is customer orientation? Customer focus means you go to the customer, you ask what are their requirements and convert them into feature, function, and a product, and then serve it so that he is happy with that. But as the things moved, now it has come into the human focus. That means it is not just a mass production or quantity. It has got one more character, that is choice. A person is selecting his own requirement. And he is having a fancy of needs and it has crossed the basic need and it has gone into the want and also to the desires and also it is going, moving ahead with the fashion, aesthetics or something like a novel or celebrity type. Uh, it has got its own ways. There, you cannot question the logic why he wants that, why she wants this. So when such things are happening, the designer has to go more and more with the customer and he should almost live with him. That is why the benefit of the end user have come into the major focus point. And when you want to know what is the benefit of the user, end user, the only one thing is a person has to take the total shape of the customer. And he has to get into his feelings and he has to go into his body, mind, soul. Then only he will understand. That is where the empathy has come. So empathy as the filter and the end user benefit as the major thing. Design thinking has come into the picture. As you know, science has got a subject which takes the old data or proves new things and also gives what is going to happen. It has got a thinking of scientific methods. 
same way based on the experience though he is not having a scientific knowledge but because of the experience and also the working with the processes in different times we have one thinking called intuitive thinking both separately if you try it may not be a very judicious mix so you have to balance that and mix it that is where the design thinking is coming that means you are entering into the human consumer or user and you are adding science with intuition and also experience so because of that what is happening more than just the knowledge the emotion the feelings they are also coming to your design that's why design thinking has taken so much of importance nowadays it is directly serving the customer what he wants and thinking from his side instead of from the technology side otherwise earlier days some people used to say product will come like that only you have to use it you have to adopt it today nobody is telling that they are trying to give whatever option you want or whatever way you want that is how the technology is taking the shape to meet the consumer okay that is on the thinking side normally how the things start says first there will be customer needs it will be in the market whether it is served unserved underserved whatever it is that as a designer or as a entrepreneur or as a person who is looking at to create you have to get into that touch that and after seeing that you have to imagine the difficulties or problems then based on that you have to give a thinking a thought process where you have to give a thinking in that thinking you have to creatively think and try to find some solutions that is where the design thinking starts but at thinking stage it is only in the mind you have to make it into doing and getting into new things manufacturing so that is where the innovation comes so design plus innovation when you say it is doing a lot of things will come if you are thinking alone for yourself there is no problem but if you are trying to make the things from customer take it think make it and then serve the customer then this in this process there are three major things which you have to be taken up that is ability to conveniently do ability to feel good and ability to work and survive that is viability desirability and feasibility when you look at these three if they are just alone standing alone it has no purpose <clears throat> it is only individualistic they have to be combined if two are combined also they will not serve the purpose all the three at least these three have to be combined that is where they will start giving solutions to the society initially they are all separate three three separately desirability feasibility and viability the minute you are finding a consumer problem that means the discovery of desirability has come then when you see a problem you have to find a problem solving method or a solution to the problem that is where the feasibility circle will come closer to the desirability once desirability and feasibility join then you have to see how to make it that means the viability circle has to be brought in when the three are coming closer and closer that is where you will find a product that is why you will see the product innovation we call it here when all the three are intersecting point that is where the real useful thing will be coming to the society that is why this is very important all the three they have to merge and you have to find a solution here and if you get an idea which is serving this that will 
serve the customer it is possible to make and also as a business it is viable so you can give a product or a service to the society and <clears throat> then on what happens is the improvements requirement in the market they take it forward so it will go on on its own this is how the products get into the manufacturing mode and also serving the customer that is from customer you take the problem you do all the internal work and then again give it to the customer in the form of a product or a service how this is done is this design thinking it is not a core subject of engineering it is a subject which is giving a discipline giving a user centric approach and also basically it is a mindset a mindset of a designer a mindset of a creator a mindset of a problem solver that means his main intention is to solve it is not to understand only the problem and leave it it is the final objective is to solve that is why it has come as to match the people needs make it technologically feasible and viable business strategy and convert that customer value and market opportunity so for doing this there are majorly five steps though by going into details you may get eight steps or six steps like that but basically they are totally grouped into five that is empathize define ideate prototype and test out of these five the first three that is empathize define and ideate these three form as a major phase one phase a this is a foundation and also this only is giving the real startup so these three are considered as a foundation and other two are is an execution side so what you take it is starting point is the need of the user then you think of the possibility of technology then get into a business goal once a project or a proposal is formed and is approved then it is ready for take off while going into the manufacturing stage first you will do all the prototypes you do whatever the concepts and all proving and making things into a feature then finally see whether it is what it is wanted by the customer that's how the test and all goes on then at the end of the test you are sure that you are giving a correct product to the customer that's how it is got into two stages that is understand and explore then the second one is materialize we see this design thinking in two stages one is phase a phase b now we will focus on to phase a that is the three stages of empathize define and ideate it is basically human centered design that means every stage you want to approach the customer the user the human and also more and more empathetic find the needs be the customer getting into his mind getting into his body getting into his experience getting more and more a feel and then from the observations go deep into the issues find a users need or a problem statement or whatever it is called as defining a point of view that means you come to a defined stage then you create ideas to solve it then finally come out with many ideas and converge them into a single idea getting it convince it to the others that it will solve the problem and it creates a market and there is a method who can do it so until such time it is a first foundation stage and every stage you have to be very open and flexible to meet the user needs at every stage that means they'll be changing today the world is changing so fast 
we are unable to catch it. So when so many things are changing, the needs also will be changing, the desires will be changing, the surroundings will be changing. So with every change, even before you make a prototype, you may have to revisit many times. And this process, it is not like a scientific linear method. It is an iterative, perception oriented and getting into the stage, any stage you can get back and again change it, again try it, again do it. That's why there is nothing called no, it is not possible, something like that. Every stage they understand and they try to give it. This is how this thing is going. <clears throat> so to start with empathy, normally if you see a human being, before human being, there is an animal, there is a, for the namesake, a rakshas. How they behave, how they think is, a rakshas thinks whether he is getting a benefit or not, he will hurt you, he will harass you, he will give trouble. Whereas an animal, it just takes what is needed, that is a hungry or a sleep or just a survival fight. Whereas the human, the real human starts with the first minimum step is a pity. At pity stage, you only feel sorry for some of the bad things or incidents or anything. More than that, you don't feel anything. You just convey it. And then comes sympathy. At the sympathy stage, you feel for it and you may share it with others. And there may be some effort to help it. And then the next one is empathy. In empathy, you feel with the sufferer and you get into his shoes and you share his feelings and understand and it is the ability which you understand the other man's feelings. That is where the empathy starts a real humanity and then comes compassion. That is, it is a higher stage of humanity or getting into the divinity. That means you will, you will live into that and try to help and take out. And this empathy, why this is so required is, you are taking the customer heart and soul and you are getting into it and you are trying to understand and try to give a solution with your basic core knowledge of engineering or core knowledge of experience or core knowledge of other areas where you can bring in that experience and give it to as a solution. This is where that user-centric design is coming and because of the empathy, you get a deep understanding of the user's point. When you get a deeper understanding that goes into your knowledge and the heart of the design and this is how we are sure that the solution will address the real user's needs. That's why all these things and in the process while you are exploring you have to observe, you have to view, you have to engage, you have to interact, then get immersed and experience along with him and understand so much deeper thing of the user's point, then only you will use all, you will apply all your knowledge and your subject will get into an application properly. And when it gets into properly application, it is sure that you will give a good product to the customer. And in the process, <coughs> One side is customer end, another side your core knowledge and the third one you will go through the relevant literature and see how these problems were there in the past or how there were solutions for this or whether they are living with this. And also you go to some experts and practitioners who are in this field, interview them, try to understand how the possible solutions or your proposed solutions will work and to make it more effective and efficient, what you have to do, all these things you have to take it so that that means you are attacking the problem 
from all angles and trying to give 110% of sure success. And in this process, the more thing is your physical involvement and also at site visits and dealing with the environment and seeing it, not just a hearing or seeing, but you are involving for yourself into the activity. This is where you get more and more relation with the customer and he also gets confidence that you are really trying to solve it. So he will be more open and he will try to give his own versions, his own perspectives and his experiences of old or abnormal things or failures, defects and all these things he will share with you which will form a good base for giving a solution. Additionally, from the market, from the complaints, from the users of different areas, from competitors, surveys, you can find a lot of issues or failures in this. This is how you get a full picture of the data, what customers want and what are the real requirements and how deep you understood that and all these things will create in deep understanding of the problem and understanding of the requirement of the user so that when you are giving a customized solution that means human centric user centric when you are giving a solution it will really give a satisfied result and whenever you are making a tailor made solutions these are all a must. Without that, you can generally give a commodity type of solution which may or may not really make customer happy. And your interest is customer should be happy with your solution and he should be interacting with you more and more and that customer and designer, they become as a single soul. So, normally empathy means people, we are all telling empathy, empathy. But how do you really get into that mind, mindset? For example, some examples. Touch. Suppose you have seen a person who is having one arm. How do you get a feel with one arm, what the difficulty he will face, how happy he is or what are all the real issues he will be going through. It's a permanent one arm, we cannot cut our hand and see. So what you have to see is, you go back into your experience. Suppose there was any arm injury, at that time you are not able to use your hand. How much struggle you suffer during that period, that is a sort of experience which you can correlate with one arm man. So then you will think, oh, so much of difficulty it is. Suppose no such injury, no such thing. Then you get into an occasions where you are holding with your one hand, one weight or one children, one, day, one child or some of the items where you are not able to use other hand, one hand. That time how much struggle you are making it to use with one hand, how you are taking it. This is some experience which gives by looking at a one hand. Same way blind. In blind, suppose you think your some operation has occurred and that time you are closing your eyes and you are just idly sit. At the time, how much struggle or how much your mentality, mind is working to see this. That gives an empathy. That means whenever you see a blind man, you should get this type of empathy so that you add your mind body along with the heart and soul. So that you, when you are designing a product for a blind man, you go deep into that empathy. Same way hearing, same way speak. 
these are all some of the things just to give a glimpse or an example how you have to get empathetic mind otherwise you can say i know i now don't know how to think of a blind man it is not that you should become blind you can get into this application type or some experience then you can see how empathetically you can get into that other man and while doing this as you see you get data in different forms photos surveys or transcripts notes sketches and you take all the thing and putting into your mind try to understand that is where this empathic i mean this first stage of empathize data gets into process <coughs> how do i really get the data there are different types of questions what why how who what why i mean find find out all these answers for different type of questions about the user or product questions or specific or closing it is just a what you call an example how you can question to get different types of data it is a model question you can just go through it and then use it wherever it is required or modify it and try to use it as per your need this is about a product suppose you are in a product specific then these are all the different questions who what where when why how all these these are common strategic common sense questions only there is nothing specific it is only a way of getting information how you question what information they give how you have to move on to that but where you have to be more careful is generally people will say what is it what really they feel as is it what they really want to tell or just by seeing it are they telling their perceptions or it is a they heard something and they are giving you that information or just they felt it and they are giving it there is no basic scientific reason for it it just is telling i thought of it i am telling it so when you are putting a question and getting the information you should watch for these insights otherwise you will get into a a solution for a wrong problem you have to really see whether it is a pain item or a gain item you have to deal differently and further you have to question so what you will do is you first at first level you will take the questions collect the data just go through it study it then you will get a lot of doubts again for re clarification or re confirmation you will again go to the same customers and to the market or site and then get clarified all these things so you have to be very careful when you are giving an inference especially it should not be your feeling or your assumption it should be as important that the customers feel you are taking it it is not that truth of your thing or you are not judging any of their things you are just taking their feelings their data their information from the customer now we get into a next chapter that is define you have collected all the information that means we have worked with our body and our thinking then we collected entire information now we are dumped with a lot of information from that collection we have to analyze we have to study and then bring it into one shape for this how you value the information how you reconstruct that problem or how do you really segregate it which is focus item which is non focus item which is primary which is relevant 
which is important, which is mandatory, or which is just useless. It is a waste. You have to find out. So for that, there are some different things. That means first you have to find what is the real value which customer is giving to that, and which criteria is giving result of that, or how do you rate it? How do you give weightage? And what is the perception customer is thinking? And what is the way you are thinking? That means you thinking means you may be thinking with the background of core knowledge or experience. Or the customer is having only a limited knowledge of that product and that issue. So he may be having a different perspective of that. So these things you have to arrive at and also analyze and segregate that entire items into a different categories. And in a more broader way, what is the job to be done? That is customer expecting and what products and services you have. That means is your capability or knowledge everything, is it matching to the job what is required by customer or he is having a pain area. Are you going to give a pain reliever for that? That means, can you help in that? Or he has got some gains, he is expecting or he is looking forward. Can you give that gain creators? These are the three things, three major value proposition things which you have to think of while defining a stage. <coughs> some Examples is, in the first stage, it is just a function or it is a technical or it is a monetary or just a business, something like that. That is a function and a cost. Is it value for money or is it a fancy item or is it a novel item or are you paying more than what is required or you are paying less or are you getting at a discounted price? These are all. That is basically on the cost and function. The second thing is, most of the times you will find products, but you have to communicate what for it is, what it is going to solve, or what it is going to really work for. This is where mostly their pamphlets and the advertisements and also the reading material are along with the component, along with the product. They help. This you have to be very careful. Otherwise, if people use the product for a wrong purpose, then the effect will be hazardous. So you have to communication should be proper. And the next one is experience. Many a times people use it for a long time and then give it to their next generation or heir or heritage or whatever it is, inheritance, whatever it is. So these areas, you have to protect such products as a memory products. For that, the value is totally different. Maybe you could have seen in our house, old clock will be there. And if it breaks, people will feel so sentimental that his grandfather is in front of him weeping. He cannot just value it like a wastage. So this value of experience, all these products, all these values, when you are empathetically working with customer, you will realize that. So that features, you can add it or you can bring it back. This you will find mostly in food products, where in most of the advertisements you will tell, the taste is like my grandmother's preparation. The recipe is like my wife's uh, preparation or my mother's preparation. That means you are bringing back that experience of the old or the memory into this new design. This is one way of making it. That is why you will find nowadays a lot of products, Amma product, Amma product or mother's recipe like that. That means you are trying to bring in the memories into this and in the same way, there is a value of spiritual. 
sometimes the products attain a higher value because of the spirituality and also the way you are giving value to your the spiritual things like this if you take it you have to find out what is the real value indicator or value creator in that a social economical technical business or psychological is it a heritage humanistic long term use aesthetics or it is only just a novel or is it a desire or it just a one time use and throw it off so these things you have to add these things into the design of the product that is how sometimes you will find some fancy items instead of being a rectangle or a square or a circle you will find different shapes it doesn't serve the purpose of a function it is more than the function but still it is attracted and it is taken by lot of customers as a fancy or as a remembrance or as a gift or as a item which is of significance memory these things and all you have to keep it in mind when you are designing and <clears throat> by the end of this defined stage you should construct user needs and you should come out with user need statement or call it as a problem statement that means you have to find out what the real problem what is who is the user what is the real need why is it so important to the user based on this only next action you can take it and the user need it is not that you you have assumed the way he has told or you have the way he has given that you have to take it as a real goal and only with that you should try to give next stage solutions and take it to the take it forward for making it really useful one so in the process of define or in the process of interviews with the users one thing you will find generally user he will say a lot of things but he will not be very clear on such things you will find very few people who are very clear about telling their need or uh, desire or anything they generally vaguely they tell you have to go into their mind and understand with your knowledge or with your experience what really they they are looking at as an example if you see you see a child and a mother a child will express in different ways we will not be able to understand but mother understands the child is in need of a milk the child is in need of a water or the child is uncomfortable such things because the mother goes into their mind and though they are not able to child is not able to tell clearly she will try to understand and give a solution that we have to get into that type of mind not just that i gave he used and that's all over now the purpose is he should it should really serve the purpose for which it is given otherwise we will be working and giving a very efficient solution for a non existing problem or a wrongly understood issue and finally it becomes a waste effort it should not be like that earlier it used to be why because you take the data from customer customer will tell but he is not very clear on what really he wants and designer also he takes what he has told because customer oriented customer told him and finally when he give a solution he thinks are this is not what i want then whatever work you have done whatever you have done is is going as a waste so in this design thinking what happens is whenever you are coming out with some solutions whenever you are coming out with some ideas you go and interact with the customer when you give that idea 
then he will tell if there is a refinement he has to do he will tell otherwise if he never thought of it whatever he thought is totally different then and there itself it gets corrected it will not go to the end and then come back as a waste so then and there itself it gets iterated with the corrections that's why this process is very important and it is taking that shape so if you see this two empathize and define it is entire thing is shown in one slide that is at the start you started with open mind you have taken every idea every information into your stage then while you are studying you wanted more information or you wanted to get into more deeper thinking so you went into the inside and again discussed with customers and again understood him more deeply and then you have come out now at the time of defining you are trying to converge it all the things and come to a particular one where you are coming out with one problem statement that is this is the problem now if i solve this customer will be happy and this problem again you will go to the user and clarify it or reconfirm it then finally come out with what the user is thinking and what the user wanted so you are sure that you are attacking the real problem so entire thing is it's only with a main purpose of as you see developing a deeper understanding of users and with a user centric way we are involving our body our mind and trying to come out with an actionable point that means you are converting a which is vague you are converting it into a clarity and then from that clarity you are using your subject your efforts and you are not just bodily doing you are adding your mind to that and your experience to that coming out with a actionable point so that everybody agreed for that actionable everybody in the sense the customer or the user and your colleagues of designers everybody says yes if you attack this this is perfect so we are coming to that at the end of the defense stage we should be clear on problem statement otherwise the defense stage is not proper and you will not be able to give a correct solution now we get into ideation in this <clears throat> until now what you have done you have done with the body and you have thought of it and you have done with the mind you give a lot of thinking and you give the ideas or come to a conclusion now you have to think heart and soul heart and you have to make it active because you have experience with the customer so you have to bring your heart also into the picture so body mind and heart you have to try to create more and more ideas and give lot of ideas for solving the issue so here what you do you do brainstorming you get inspiration from different experiences outsiders and you will discuss with inter- interactive sessions with outsiders take the help and give a free thinking to s- offer solutions so from the problem statement to solve that you create divergently lot of ideas and while doing that you get into three four types of research one is generative research that means today we are like this but tomorrow by the time you come out the surroundings will change the ideas will change and the people also will change so it has to help in identifying new opportunities and exploring the new needs of the future so that is how you bring future into the present another one is evaluating research 
this helps in identifying and focusing on your surroundings i mean focusing on the experiments which you have done which you are thinking of taking it forward so what you are thinking of the improvements you will get feedback on that you will be working out on the which are all the experiments which are going through and the third one is a traditional one that is it is a validating research that it is just to understand what is currently happening that means earlier we thought of this and we would have some we would have got better some we would have not achieved some we would have held up so all these things you will try to understand and try to give a solution for that so all these three put together you take the past you take the current and you think of the future and trying to give a balanced solution that is idea will attack or address all the three based on the data and <clears throat> this is the most crucial stage why because it is in this stage only you are creatively thinking and you are giving you are getting into a solution mode so until now it is only understanding the problem now you are trying to give a solution and that solution also you are adding creativity to this so this helps a change and an improvement a moving forward these things if you are following the old method sometimes it may not be able to really solve the issue that is why you have taken the past and you have seen what are the current and you are thinking of the future so your idea is going to long last or it is to sustain and also when it is given to the customer customer is not thinking of this creative thinking so he will also say excited he will get excited or delighted so this gives a chance for you to get the customer into a delight mode by your solution here when you are getting the ideas it will get into a divergent thinking and when you are coming to conclude it will get into convergent thinking so always this divergent convergent will be working hand in hand you have to balance that whenever you want wider thinking you have to creatively think and when you are trying to come to a consensus or solve you have to come to a single point that time you have to critically think so many things is original non judgmental flexibility novelty fashion all these things will come into your ideas when you are giving the ideas you can give anything there is no limitation then only you will get into a correct mode <clears throat> and once you got all the ideas that means you are generating the ideas once you generate you have to select and after selecting you have to pitch it pitch it means you believed in one and that you are expressing it to others so that they also get convinced to support you to go ahead otherwise everybody tells different different ideas and nobody is converging then the project will not move so idea generation is a divergent mode idea selection is a scientific method and idea pitching is a final conclusive or critical or what you call is a analytical method where you pinpointly say this is the solution so the flaring mode comes into a focus mode and this presentation should be such that it is convincing to all and it is communicating to all at the time what are all the things you will check desirability desirability we have seen from empathy stage it is so required for the customer then <clears throat> in the idea stage you will see the feasibility 
that is the creativity the invention innovation and now when you are giving it idea pitching you have to see some sort of a viability and sustainability that is clarity a direction and a way forward as a starting point you have taken the need of the user then you got into possibilities of technology so that yes you can do it now you are coming to a idea pitching that is idea end of idea stage where you are deciding these are the goals of the business these are what the customer needed this is how i am going to do it this is how it becomes a viable one so this is a very very critical end point in the project that's why we have to see more deeply into this we have seen the desirability that means lot of people wants it but nobody knows how to make it and nobody knows how to make it viable also because when nobody knows how to make it there is no question of viability in such case there is nothing can be done that means a single desirability is there it doesn't work okay if it is a feasible that means you can do the product but there is no customer and there is no investor and it is not available you can you can just you know how to make it but what is the use of it you can just make it in your house or just think it in a paper or you can put it in idea or write up that's all it is of no use suppose there is a viability there is a person who is ready to invest but there is no designer to think or there is no customer to buy so these three when they are separately standing it is of no use suppose they both are clubbed desirability and feasibility yes there is a customer there is a manufacturer but there is nobody to fund it because it is not available you cannot supply it on long term basis so it is not available then then also it is of no use same way desirability and viability when there is no feasibility there is no point in talking about that desirability and the same way feasibility and viability is there but when there is no customer it is as good as doing it at a house or in the college or in the uh, for yourself there is that's why <coughs> the ideas the techniques or the problem statements everything they should address all the three if it is only addressing one or two it is of no use the minimum is all the three that is someone wants it yes we can make it and we are ready to make it with viable methods so we should do it now what happens is yes we are doing it suppose there is a heavy demand you have given the product and everybody wanted next day they came here asking for all the things is it scalable can you really grow can you make it big that is the next idea next analytical point that means can you make it scalable then suppose yes it is scalable you can make it in mass you have made it in thousands but is it sustainable is it that customers want it daily like this or only once in a while that is like on a january first uh, the sweets and the fruits that's all on third and fourth nobody buys that only on first they want all the sweets all the f- gifts all the cakes in such case so we have to see after these three these three are the basic then you have to see scalability and sustainability because these are all prerequisites sustainability is depending on the scalability and sustainability scalability they depend on the self generating if it is not able to generate its life then the viability is the major issue it is only a short term or it is only a seasonal so you cannot have a long term or a sustainable one or continuously for the time to come and when you group it all together it comes like this this is 
a basic level questions desirable questions viable questions sustainable and then feasible so with this what happens is you get a picture of ideation and sustainability recent times all these new subjects have come into the picture earlier it was not so important but today for the coming generations and also for the current generations these have become very important that is environmental impact human rights impact social impact physical and physiological impact these things are becoming the major issue that's why earlier design thinking it was only 3 or 4 now this sustainability is taking a major role with a short term and long term <coughs> This is how the first three circles have become one, two, three, four, five. That is, the user-centric is there, discipline is there, and matching the people needs, technological, feasible, and viable. Everything is there. It started just with three, thinking that yes, with these three you can survive. But in recent times, the experience. what happened is some bad experiences some effects of what you call not full solutions some new addons are there that is sustainability an environmental element evident in circular economy and also impactability socio culture element that extends desirability why this is added is when you are developing newly the after effects on the next generations earlier we found few things were creating environmental issues so now that environmental issue also is got into this and socio culture that is on the human rights or physiological or psychological these things also creating some issues so now the impact is being considered so that it gets into the desirability role and sustainability environment it gets into the viability role so these two are again added technology and feasibility anyway it is a it is a manufacturing one so you will be developing new generation new processes new things so when they are coupled with this environmental and desirability the feasibility gets streamline or become more and more fine tuned so in total these three the idea of pitch that is empathize define and ideate ends with idea pitch at this stage it is a heart a body a mind these three are combined and a creativity has come and user centric perspective has come in resolving and it has become the foundation and deciding stage for the next steps next steps are prototype and test that is execution type so at this stage you have to see and it is a milestone step that is a make or break for next actions that's why the first phase is very important and in the first stage you can get into a small presentation like a problem statement and what is about the project who is the user and what you are solving for and what did you do to solve the problem what did you find out main insight that means how you got into this process and how it addresses the problem so this is in a simple way if you make it this defines what you want to solve before really getting into the next potential solutions that means problem and user idea and solution that's all these three gives the summary of the first phase <clears throat> if you see as a thing design is 
start with the customer find unmet needs qualitative research and then problem solving that are the three steps but in design thinking at the start to the research empathy is added that means you are involving the customer and trying to understand more and more of the real users issues then before research to so problem solving you are looking into unmet needs which are unspecified or unexpressed but still it is there in their mind and after taking it you see with the user is it evident or is it what understood as it right then only you are getting into problem solving that means by the time it came to problem solving and giving a process you are sure that you have really gone through the customer in full unlike in the earlier days in the earlier days when man is not having so many desires it was serving at least 90% of the purpose suppose if you use the old method to the new generation or new situations new surroundings it may not even serve 50% that's why this additionally empathy define and ideate idea pitch of coming to in between to the real scientific steps of customer focus research and solution in between these three another three have come mainly for that <clears throat> it gives a complete understanding further earlier it was a step by step process that is a linear one now there is nothing like that while doing define suppose you get a doubt we'll again go back to empathy or research or when your idea you have found some ideas but you got a doubt you will get back to define or research and again think in that there is nothing called you have crossed the station so you cannot come back it is not a one way it is a two ways or three ways or four ways wherever you want from any step to any step you can get back the main purpose is user center and solution and deep understanding and 100% solving that in summary this is how it goes into that when first you started you started with problem experience that is you are practicing with the body then you are getting into define you started thinking with the mind and logic then when you are getting into idea you are thinking with heart and giving an emotion that means when you are giving a solution it is getting and then when you go to the prototype and test you bring in your hands that means you work with the product and you get the real experience and then you get into the testing while testing you will feel the real application so what customer was feeling earlier when you are working when you are finding the problem and when you give a solution when you work you will see what is the difference how that was really solving it this is how it is and if you see in this entire process empathy and curiosity that is what is making this any method and more than that you have to think emphasis on human behavior that is bringing the best effectiveness into this that means you are taking the past you are bringing it to the present and you are taking the present trying to improve it and you are thinking of the future and bringing it here so this is how you are bringing the human behaviors and emphasis on that human behavior by adding your empathy and curiosity you are getting into this it is not just like that your technology told this you are designed you are given the product let the customer either do or die and why this has come while you are doing industrialization you brought lot of new things and when you are bringing new things some of the old good 
your lost state. And over a period, you have found whatever you brought new, there were some after effects. So, absence of the good and the effect of the bad over a period, it has given a rethinking and then we started giving, we went into this design thinking so that you can bring in the good of old and merge it with the future in mind so that you give a better thinking. So, this per perception, iterative and problem solving and rational thinking, dynamic thinking, all these things, they have become the part of it. And today, the people who are working, they have to learn these skills and they have to be conversant with all these things. When you give a product with all these, they complement and multiply and you will give a better product of higher wisdom so that it is more useful and people can be more happier with this. This is how the first stage we have done. We will see in the next session the second stage also. For now, thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.